Hello everyone and welcome to the Fujitsu webinar on how to optimize your BOPUS operations. Today we'll spend some time walking you through the details of a brand new solution built exclusively by Fujitsu America and delivered as a SaaS solution on Salesforce Cloud, Consumer Goods Cloud. This webinar will be recorded of course and will be made available to you uh, after uh, the presentation. I'll be introducing everyone today. My name is Paul Burel. I'm Senior Director of Retail Industry uh, Consulting at Fujitsu America. Joining me today are Parashar, who leads our Salesforce practice at Fujitsu America, and Nitin Garg, who is our functional architect uh, in our Salesforce practice. Now let's uh, get right on into it. Um, at this point in 2020, it's certainly not news that the COVID-19 global pandemic has created many, many challenges, and those challenges have basically just continued to evolve so far this year. At an industry level, retail has been hit particularly hard. We've seen mandatory shutdowns, uh, volatility in sales, uh, inventory shortages, uh, resource shortages, uh, and that's just within the retailer community. Uh, equally impactful, we've seen a wide new set of customer expectations around shopping safety, experience, uh, fulfillment, and other things. Over the past uh, eight months, uh, that really hasn't been easy for any of us. Inside the retail industry, for example, virtually overnight, problems erupted at every level, and retailers had to scramble to react to an enormous set of issues. Uh, for example, uh, in the retail essentials businesses, uh, stores that were uh, really functioning well before COVID were immediately stripped of all of their inventory or their classes of products literally overnight, while non-essential re retail businesses saw customer traffic uh, wither to nothing uh, overnight. So at present, as we approach the winter of 2020, nobody really knows what will happen through the retail holiday season, uh, selling season this year. Um, now, however, you know, many retailers have already made plans to rely much more heavily on their buy online pickup and store or, uh, operation, uh, which includes curbside pickup uh, to carry pretty much their order fulfillment loads for the year for the, comp for the company and their stores. So for the remainder of this year and probably well into 2021, uh, e-commerce, uh, D2C fulfillment, new micro fulfillment operations, and uh, dark store based fulfillment operations are all gonna be very important factors to retain and attract the customers, not to mention making their sales numbers for this last quarter of the year and probably for the entire year. Uh, right now, for the most part, the focus is on the existing open store fulfillment processes, of course, and how to optimize those particular operations. These are all top priorities, of course, because stores are by far still the largest fulfillment channel in retail. Now, uh, let's look at some of the market challenges that we're facing today. And we can start by looking at grocery for just a minute. So needless, needless to say, the grocery industry, we all know, uh, operates on razor thin margins. There was already a shift to online grocery shopping in North America before COVID, and that really has been heating up, up uh, for the past few years. Uh, so as many retailers, especially in the grocery segment, have been reporting net margin losses when fulfilling online customer orders, some of the larger grocery retailers like Kroger and Walmart, they were already using new technology solutions to try to optimize their in-store fulfillment processes. Both Kroger and Walmart had already developed their own mobile solutions, they built custom applications, they had dedicated order picking and quality control resources, and so forth. But while these retailers were making headway on optimizing BOPUS uh, order fulfillment, many others were not. In fact, many retailers uh, simply, they've just been lagging. They're still trying to figure out how to fulfill online grocery orders cost effectively. Uh, dealing with legacy systems, unfortunately, has not been easy. And you know, a lot of those systems were really never designed to be adapted for BOPUS operation. So uh, a good examples for many of the regional grocers, uh, they simply just don't have the resources right now to focus on BOPUS improvement. So they're limping along with what they have been able to pull together uh, to this point in the year. And as you can see in this slide, suboptimized BOPUS operations could end up costing grocers between 50 and 80 basis points of total margin over the next five years, which is enormous. And for the grocers that decide to do their BOPUS operation pretty much on their own, uh, and they don't charge customers for any curbside pickup fees, for example, they're already losing between 11 and 15 percentage points of operating margin right now today. So according to Bain and Company, they're losing money on every curbside order they fill today, day in and day out. Uh, you know, last we should ask ourselves, how long will this elevated shift to curbside to pick up last in the long run? 
Well, the answer is not easy, but and most of the industry analysts have varying opinions. Most agree that the historical trend line for curbside adoption had jumped upward roughly five to seven percentage points just due to COVID-19 this year. And they predict that that jump will track higher over the next five years because as more customers have gotten accustomed to the convenience uh, of BOPUS, as well as the safety and curbside delivery, they're going to stick with it. So in, the in-store fulfillment challenge is really amplified significantly right now not only how to fill the growing number of orders uh, online and still maintain their margins, uh, but even in the best case scenarios, they're gonna be still operating at a lower profit or just barely breaking even for now in best case. That outcome clearly is not gonna sit well with grocery re re leadership teams, of course, uh, the owners, and of course, the stockholders. So now let's, uh, let's move ahead and talk about Bobus Institution for just a minute. But we see in this slide three BOPUS imperatives. The, the first is you have to do what your competitors are doing. The competitors are offering the service today, so you pretty much have to too. Second, customer expectations are now set for fast, accurate, and in many cases free uh, curbside pickup. Uh, and third, automation, which is now an essential key and a key component uh, uh, for reducing fulfillment time, including reducing the picking orders, getting the BOPUS operations firmly into at least a break-even situation for the company, if not heading towards uh, operational profitability in the long run. So while many retailers have uh, indeed implemented an in-store fulfillment process, many of those are very immature. Uh, some are even paper-based right now. They actually print out a paper from a receipt uh, printer, for example, and a store uh, associate will go and run and pick the uh, orders uh, from that as a pick list from a receipt. Some retailers have legacy apps that at best are, are barely a, a, a gap type solution. They're really not designed for any form of portability or mobility implementation. So as we enter this second generation, as we call it, of BOPUS operation, it makes sense that retailers are searching for the right mix of technology solutions to help them address the rising volume of BOPUS orders. And so finally now, we're moving into the fourth quarter, obviously of 2020, and of course the holiday season. So we're about to see how well everybody's done this year with their solution they have in place. So clearly rapid adaptation, automation, process management, technology implementation, they're all gonna be a big part of any uh, successful solution. It's also clear, uh, and that many have made this observation as well, that the pandemic is forcing uh, functional acceleration changes to be happening anyway. So in context, where does Fujitsu stand? How, it's a, the question, how are we helping retailers address BOPUS execution challenges right now? And we'll get into that next. At Fujitsu, we, we've been watching this market movement for quite a while. We've been listening to the analysts uh, and been reading their reports well before COVID arrived. We started thinking about ways to address in-store fulfillment as far back as early 2019. In fact, we already had several uh, different mobility solutions uh, in place that were designed for in-store operations. We've had those for many years, uh, but most were associated with things like tracking tasks, for example, like mobile POS. And they really weren't designed for fulfill fulfillment tasks uh, for BOPUS operation. So we started looking at platforms that had the potential to address in-store tasking and even took a look at uh, new technologies like Salesforce's new uh, consumer goods cloud. Now, even though CG Cloud is intended for a vendor's field merchandiser or contractor to use, we immediately realized that CG Cloud's capabilities could be refined to work for retailer store teams. Uh, that means that they can use the same technology to work tasks associated with BOPUS uh, in-store operations and fulfillment tasks. So after a few internal review sessions, we, we decided that we would go ahead and start working on the storyboards and the workflows to see if we could find any reason CG Cloud wouldn't be a good fit. Uh, and the good news is in the end, CG Cloud actually had everything we needed foundationally, including task optimization, capacity planning, routing, scheduling, uh, and even in-store communications to pass information uh, from across the team. So much of what we needed was fundamentally already there. Uh, and from a business value uh, position, we used our experience of working with Salesforce, which we've done for many years now, uh, to gauge the improvements that should be achievable compared to what basically amounts to manual processes in the field today. So we ended up uh, quantifying roughly how much time and cost that we thought we could recover using uh, Salesforce CG Cloud as the platform to build the application on, as well as how much we can improve the pick accuracy, which is a huge uh, deal. Uh, and then we decided to go ahead and move forward with CG Cloud as our base product platform. 
And so afterwards, uh, we got through that process. We created the process map, of course, with all the players or the stakeholders that would be involved. Uh, we, we looked at the task that had to be accomplished, uh, the order in which the tasks needed to happen, et cetera. And we really ended up breaking the process down into three basic functions in the store. The first is optimization, uh, second, execution, and third, verification, as shown here in the shaded box. Now, because we're using CG Cloud and Salesforce Lightning to build the workflows, we can easily change the roles and the task sequences at any time. Before today, uh, we've simply done a single threaded order handling process, making it easy to see exactly what we built. So keep in mind, this solution is easily configurable. For example, if you want to do cluster or back batch picking, that can happen, obviously, uh, because we can aggregate all of the items across multiple orders. Uh, we can stream those into a single pick stream for a person working the tasks, and then we can associate each item picked with an order or to be placed in a bin. And then finally, uh, we also added timers in the pick process so that we can capture a lot of data on picker performance, uh, the time it took to travel specific pick routes, for example, uh, the overall task efficiency from beginning to end. Uh, we think that's a tremendous added value for what we built. So now let's take a look at the, uh, the, some of the technical details of the in-store order fulfillment solution. Uh, Parashar, why don't you start now by telling us about the architecture that supports the solution and what you and your team did to create that. Thank you, Paul. Um, we all know pandemic has accelerated the move to digital transformation, focusing on employee and customer experience. Today, companies realize that the products or services delivery needs to be efficient, but at the same time, making the overall experience easier for the consumers. That is why we chose Salesforce Consumer Goods Cloud, a low-code application platform, multi-tenant cloud architecture, providing a consistent look and feel across multiple devices. Paul, as you remember, our, our technical teams work closely with your team to, to map business use cases to the underlying features and functions to the platform. The result is a solution that makes the operations efficient and smarter. It's a highly scalable solution that our customers can deploy quickly within weeks and get started. Salesforce Consumer Goods Cloud is an API ready platform. What that means is it can integrate with any e-commerce or auto management system. You retailers have it within your uh, infrastructure. With these integrations in place, Consumer Goods Cloud uh, can, can really take an order coming from an e-commerce that is placed by a consumer online shopping for groceries place the order, chooses a pickup time, chooses a preferred store location, and that particular order will then be validated by the e-commerce and order management system and then pushed to Salesforce Consumer Goods Cloud, and that is where the magic happens. If I can draw your attention to the right side of the slide, you will see we are using Consumer Goods Cloud out-of-box functionality, which helps retailers to list their store products in store locations, orders, etc. And thanks to the Salesforce multi-tenant cloud architecture, the solution can be used across multiple stores and in multiple regions. Once we have all of this information within the system, we are able to use the features and functions of cons Consumer Goods Cloud to perform automated and intelligent task routing, effective task, product, and store management, which can be used across multiple devices, be it mobile, tablet, or desktop. Some of the key features to highlight over here are the start and the stop timer that a CSR or a picker would use within a particular store. Every time a picker or CSR picks up a, a particular task to complete, the date and time stamp are recorded automatically. This data when collected over a period of time can be very helpful for retailers for capacity planning during various times in a year and depending on the seasonality. Taking it further, by looking at historical order trends and based on the time it takes to complete the tasks or fulfill an order, store managers can work with area managers to plan for capacity within the store. And this, and this is where the Salesforce Einstein, the AI engine of Salesforce comes into play, where the system can learn over time, provide recommendations to the store managers, taking the guesswork out of the picture, saving huge amount of time and reducing in-store order fulfilling errors. Another important module this platform will provide is and is in the process of being added is the enablement module. We know companies can spend millions of dollars for training and enabling employees. We plan to make it easier for employees or contractors to be trained and enabled. 
Our Enable Them Training module, powered through Salesforce Cloud Solution, can, own, can not only provide training at any time and anywhere, but also gamify the experience. The result of all of this can be used by the retailers to deploy staff efficiently and intelligently, which can play a vital role in reducing pick errors and rework. In addition to these features and functions, there are other functionalities like chatbot and self-service portals that can further enhance the employee and the customer experience. Employees can quickly look for information by interacting with chatbots. For example, I'm here to pick up order numbers six or four and XYZ item is not available on the shelf. Based on this, the chatbot can automatically notify the store manager, but also guide the picker on what are the next steps he can do, either to continue to a different order or to take certain other steps. On the customer side of the house, if you, if you look at those things over there, the store manager can use this platform to provide alternatives to the customer in case an item is damaged or, not, or, or truly not available. Without the need of a phone call, the store manager can select alternatives if the order is product is damaged and the customer can choose the alternatives via the self-service portal. Since the solution is built on number one CRM platform, the solution can use all of the data it collects and use it to determine customers' buying habits and demands. This sort of data can be used to integrate with Marketing Cloud to do the context and target-based marketing, which will help in customer retention, positively influence loyalty and increase sales. And by the way, just for our viewers, we have also built a loyalty management solution on Salesforce Cloud Solution that can be easily integrated to it. At Fujitsu, with more than 35 years of retail industry experience, we are building many solutions that will bring advanced digital commerce capabilities to our retailers. And this solution does exactly that. A scalable, modular, solution that can help retailers in current market situations, enhancing customer experience in a customer experience manner. Now let's talk about um, what, what uh, we have seen the architecture, but how does it really look into a demo? So let's walk you through that. Um, so, so we can imagine that, let's imagine a scenario where a consumer has placed an online order and that online or through that online order, the consumer has picked up a preferred date and a time and a preferred store to pick up. As he places that order, it'll go through the e-commerce engine auto management system and be pushed into our consumer goods cloud, which is where, as we said, magic happens. It's automatically based on capacity planning assigned to a picker. And that picker is what you'll start seeing in the demo, how he executes that task and completes it. Within that scenario, you'll also see the picker being pick blocked. That means some item that was available through the order management system somehow is damaged uh, when, when the picker goes to pick it up. O on the screen, what you're seeing over here are just an illustration of what you're going to see in the demo. Some of them are mobile screens, which are used by this, the picker and the CSR. And some of it is a desktop where a store manager can take meaningful actions. With that said, I would like to turn it over to my colleague, Nitin Gerg, who has been the brains behind building and designing the solution. Over to you, Nathan. Thank you, Parashar, for the background and the introduction to the solution, and also introducing the personas who will be, uh, you know, who will be seen uh, throughout the demo. Uh, in the meantime, can we transition the screen to the store picker, please? All right, so. I'm logged in on my mobile device as the store picker and uh, let me actually start uh, sharing my screen as soon as I get the presenter right. All right, so I'm looking at my mobile screen now and let me go to my Salesforce solution. So here I'm logged in as a store picker. So my name is Stephen Cooper. Um, I do have a few notifications which I have which have popped in on my mobile screen. So I see that there is a few Bopus uh, tasks uh, which have been assigned to me for picking up the products. Let me go back to the list. 
here when i log in onto my mobile app i see the tasks organized in in a way in a few buckets uh, there is a few tasks which are due today if i scroll down further there is a task which few tasks which are overdue and then there are a few tasks which are currently open and i can see the entire list over there so if i click on more i would see the entire list which is available to me so as a background what has happened is a few orders have been placed by the customers and then they have been uh, directed towards the in store pick and then related to that there is a few tasks which have been created for the picker as well as the csr and this is the list i'm looking at so at this point of time let me actually start my picking process and then let me uh, pick products on this specific order so what i did is i clicked open the task and then uh, it shows me the details of what the task is about it's assigned to me as i could see the task type is order pick i do see a task description which actually summarizes everything which i need to do as part of picking those products it also shows me a due date and then it also says that it's related to a customer whose name is donald sir if i scroll down further i do see that there is a small timer section which will eventually bring and uh, capture the start and the end time when i start and uh, you know end uh, my picking activities as parashar was saying earlier so without delay let me actually click on this uh, range icon on the top left which says accept task to be actually able to accept the task and pick my products so when i click on that what happens is in the background the task it was now earlier assigned and now it has been updated to in progress we will see it later when we go back to the task and it directly takes me to the to the page which actually shows me what are the products which are available for me to pick on that order so i see a bag of stock i click on that to see any more details and you know in terms of what is the store shelf where it is located how much is the quantity so at this point of time as a picker i'm going to make my way into the store to that specific shelf to be able to pick those products i am also would be carrying a specific bin with me where i'm going to be storing all these products which i'm picking up so at this point of time i would have reached that place i will click on edit and when i click on edit i will see more detailed information of what that product is all about which store which aisle and then here i see an editable section where i can actually enter some information so this is the place where i'm going to enter the quantity which i have picked so in, in this case it's one and then i do have additional information which i need to mention where i need to mention the pick pick location bin so i select the bin and the specific bin which i am carrying so in i store there could be a lot of bins i'm going to be picking up one of them which i am carrying in my hand let's say i pick store bin 2 and then that is all what i need to do i'll click on save and when i save the record what happens is it basically updates the status from assigned to pick complete awaiting verification now at this point of time the csr is going to be also notified on this specific order saying that the picking has been complete this is assigned and bin 2 now you once it is ready you can actually go verify the products before being before being delivered to the customer so i should remember as a store picker that my timer is also running so i'll click back click here to go back to the task as i mentioned earlier the task which was assigned to steven cooper picker is now in progress the first one in the list if i click on that i see it's in progress if i scroll down further i see that the timer was captured as well there is nothing else for me to do on this order as a picker so i'm going to end task so i click on that end task button and then i can enter any comments all items picked and then i click on save So with that, what happens is the start and end timer is captured, the task is marked as complete, and it goes away from my list of tasks available. Now let's look at another task which is available to me, which is assigned to me for picking up the products. So let's look at this list. I see that there is a sorter. I will do the same thing. It's for a different customer, and I see that there are now two products assigned in this order. So let's go to the first one, and I and I navigate my way towards the store location, store uh, aisle or shelf, and I click on edit. And at this point of time, I see that I do not see a quantity of one of this bread available in the store. So I am kind of pick blocked. In this case, what I need to do is I do not need to enter any pick quantity, pick location, or pick bins because of of course I have nothing to pick for. So I am pick blocked. So I will update the status as pick blocked. and then the system will ask me to put a reason when it notifies the manager store manager saying that what is the reason why you are pick blocked 
So I have a few options available which can be customized further. It says no shelf availability. And I click on save. And then the same thing happens here on the customer order product. It basically has updated the status to pick blocked. And then since I remember my staff was running and I do not want to be not counted against the time when the item was picked up, I was picked blocked and the item was not available. So I click here to go back to the task. Now, something which we should notify here is, is different from the previous order which I picked, right? I saw that there were two tasks which were created earlier on that order. One was for the store picker and the other one was for the CSR. Now, for this specific order, I see that there is another task which has been created, which is assigned to the store manager named Brad Flynn. And the task says Bopis uh, product pick blog require remediation. Uh, you may not be able to see right now. I will show it to you later. But then the manager was also notified at this point of time that there is an order which was picked block because certain product was not available. But in my case, all I need to care about is the task which was in progress. I need to make it, uh, you know, I need to pause the timer on this. So if I click on show more, there are two additional options, pause and unpause timer. So I click on pause timer. And as soon as I do that, the task updates to waiting on someone else, as you could see. So this is all the picker has to do in terms of picking up the product or when the picker is pick block, what the actions they need to do. Let's actually switch screens now and see what the store manager needs to do for, uh, for remediating the pick block which was done earlier. So while I transition the screen to the store manager, bear with me. All right, so now I'm sharing my screen as the store manager. And here is the screen, here is the information which the store manager see when they log in into the system. All right, so if you see the notifications here, I can click on that and I can see that Steven, uh, Steven Cooper Picker has updated the customer order and he also assigned the task. The task says focus uh, order big blocked require remediation. If I refresh my page, the same will also be available to me and visible on this main screen alongside the dashboard, where is a small list which actually says the task requiring attention. And this is where I see my task is there. So I should click on that. And I see all the details assigned on this particular task. It's related to the same customer Carl Peterson, it says the task type is product stocking, which is different than what the picker and CSR is gonna do. And at this point of time, I will actually accept the task because even my metrics is being counted as a store manager. So I click on accept task. It takes me to the customer order products and I could see which was the particular product which was picked blocked in which store shelf it is located and, and I can check on my inventory and see what I need to do as a store manager. So, Imagine that, you know, behind the scenes, outside the system, the store manager is gonna take an action, will actually make the product available and then go back to the task and mark his task as complete. So I will, uh, I will end task at this time. A product stopped. And I click on save. So with that, what happens is, there is a few things which are happening behind the scenes as well. Apart from this task getting marked as complete, there is also a notification which is sent to the store picker at this point of time. You know, letting them know that the, the item which you were pick blocked on has been has been stocked up and then they can actually now continue, go back and continue their picking task. This also updates the picker's task status from waiting on someone else to ready to continue. And we can see that later in the in the details. While we are looking at what the store manager has to do in order to able to you know, make one product available on the, on, the, on the shelf, we can see the other things which are available to the store manager. Let's look at how do they really manage the retail store. So if I go to the retail store tab here, I can see this is one of my stores, which I'm the store manager at. I can see all the details of the store. Apart from that, I can see the in-store locations which have been created. I can see how many store employees 
and what are their task capacity, how many tasks are open, and I can actually manage their capacity planning in some or some way. There is also a store store assortment. There's those products which are available, different orders which have come in, the customer orders getting created, and at some point of time they could also uh, send a survey invitation and response from here. If I go to my customer orders, if I go to my orders which our customers have submitted. I can see that this one is the order which I was looking at. And if for any reason the product which was blocked was completely not available, as a store manager, I could have communicated with the customer directly from the order screen, sent an email and wrote whatever I want to do, communicate any substitute products or any replacement items, or just letting them know that the product is completely not available. I can also go down further and look at the different customer orders and check on the metrics which have been captured for the for the picker at this point of time. So if I scroll down further, I see the open activities list. So this is ready to continue as we said earlier. Now if I click on this particular task, I can see the detailed time, time information which has been updated, right? So at this point of time, they have paused, they have started the task, they paused the timer, and now when, when the uh, store picker will continue, they will unpause and end the task. So all this metric is being captured here. Apart from that, the total task time is also being captured, which is gonna be important uh, in, in terms of determining how much time the store employees are spending for picking up the products. While we are looking at this, we should also spend some time looking at the dashboard, which has been created for the store manager. And let me actually open the dashboard in a bigger view. All right, so the dashboard which we have created for the store manager has a few collection of charts and graphs, which actually gives them an accurate information of how their store orders are trending based on the loyalty status. Is there any customer order which is delayed? If this was one, it would be notified and the, and the store manager can actually take an action right from here. Any of the BOPIS tasks which are due today, so that they're on top of the metrics here. Uh, small charts on how many orders have been placed by uh, different loyalty customers. An important metric here would be for the store employees which are running close to capacity, total number of four employees, and then at this point of time, the store manager can take an action from here. They can also see the other details about Popus tasks which are open uh, by the picker or the CSR. They can also see, um, you know, what are the different status of the orders, and also the orders by account and complete and their detailed status on where they are. These are all actionable insights which the store manager can do. While we are doing all these transactions, we should also know that there is a lot of emails which have been uh, baked in and built into the solution, which are being sent out to the customer and also the store manager at every point of time. So I'm pulling up a few emails which are here. All the way starts from when the new BOPIS order has been placed and the store manager has been notified. It also talks about an email which is being sent to the customer for any BOPIS order which was placed by the store, right? Uh, at during the store, during the pick journey, at various points of time, these emails are sent out to the customer notifying them of the progress. And at the same time, since this is out of the box sales for solution, this can be configured further and modified based on the need. Once the order is picked complete, and then the, it's verified, then it will be uh, updated to ready for pick. And then here is the email which will be sent out to the customer. So everything is ready for pickup now at this store. And then depending on the type of pick they have uh, uh, they have mentioned on the order, whether it is a curbside or a BOPIS in-store or a locker, depending on that, they will be able to pick the orders and they actually make their way to the store. So we have looked at the persona from the store manager. Let's quickly have a look at what the picker is going to do uh, for completing that particular task, which uh, with the order which was assigned to the picker earlier. So let me make the store CSR as the presenter at this time, and let's quickly uh, change the screens and look at their, their side of the journey as well. All right, so I'm now logged in as the CSR here on my iPhone this time. 
just to make sure it's yeah Dina Colada CSR and then they have a bunch of notifications as you could see that there is a task which has been assigned and ready for uh, verification. It's a very similar screen as we saw for the pickers. We scroll all the way down. We look, we look at the detailed uh, uh, tasks which are open to them. And let's actually look at one of them which was ready for verification at this time. All right, so I pick up this one. I'm going to do the exact, exact same thing. The task description for the CSR is a little different from what the CSR, what the picker was seeing. I click on accept task. It takes me to the customer order. I go to the products. It says sick complete awaiting verification. I click on it for further details. I edit this as a CSR and I verify all the information which was entered by the by the picker. And all I need to do at this point of time is verified by CSR. Now, of course, this is a very simple verification, but at this point of time, the CSR could be verifying the products by scanning the products altogether and matching it with the order products. At the same time, this can be customized further to add additional information to be captured. So what I did is I, veri I marked verified by CSR and uh, all I need to do is click save. And when I do that, it updates the status to verification complete. I can go back to my uh, task. And then I, all I need to do on my task, which is now in progress, is end the task. I can also enter my comments. Items verified and I click on save. And as I was doing that, I was also receiving an email that the, the uh, entire order is ready for pick and please, for the customer, for them to actually come to the store for picking up the products. So what we have seen is a customer, uh, the store picker performing the picking job. We have also seen the store manager performing a pl plenty of activities in uh, along with uh, remediating the pick block scenario. And we also see how the CSR is going to make the products ready and make it available for the customer to come and pick them. So with that, I, I wrap the demo and I will hand it over to Parashar for taking it further. Thank you, Nathan. Very powerful demo. Uh, and just to summer before, as I start summarizing it, if you want to uh, uh, make the presenter, okay, great. Um, uh, so thank you, Nathan. Uh, this was really, really powerful. And uh, just to remind our viewers, as Nathan was going through that, you saw multiple personas, you saw a picker, uh, you saw the, the job being transitioned to a CSR, and in cases where the picker was pick blocked, the job was transitioned to a store manager who has the ability to uh, remedify the solution, uh, the, the situ situation, I'm sorry. Um, and, and also, the system automatically takes care of notifications. It sends out notifications, and we'll talk a little briefly about this on our roadmap uh, uh, path. And, and the, um, so, 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 why are we talking about roadmap, right? Uh, the change is the only constant. We know that. With changing consumer demand and behavior, retailers are required to revisit their business models. However, they will also have to make sure supporting technologies are constantly evolving to support their business models. That is the other reason why we chose this platform that you were seeing to, uh, uh, in the demo. The illustration here shows our in-store fulfillment solution current and future features based on the business impact. We have developed a version 1.0 that is represented in the red dots here on the left-hand side. These capabilities gives retailers the ability to fulfill BOPIS using automated task management or efficient processing. The proactive automated alerts and notifications that we were talking about under the hood, it takes the guesswork out of everybody, but also ensures everybody, including the customer, can be notified at the right time. Retailers can tweak the embedded notification templates as per their changing business needs. With, with smart capacity planning features, retailers can make sure store associates and CSRs are assigned the right amount of tasks to ensure effective store operations. A big plus of all of this that you guys saw today was really the mobile screens, how it can enable the retailers and enable their pickers, CSRs, employees, contractors to really work through the solution. The solution is also API ready and can be integrated with any e-commerce and auto management system. Our viewers also saw today that there are a number of KPIs and active monitoring dashboards that store managers headquarters can use to track their operations and drive smart decision based on that. 
Now let's talk about purple dots. This is where we are headed next. And the slope of the line begins to ramp up significantly as we stack up more capabilities that drive even greater business value. As these future features become available, there will be a significant positive change in the value slope when we get into harvesting, data harvesting, model training, and AI, and batch processing of the orders. And all of this is in works as we speak today. With our upcoming training module that I spoke about it earlier, retailers can offer training on any device at any time. We think this will play a vital role in significant cost of the training, reducing the cost of the training, and also reducing the pick errors and therefore increasing the bottom line contribution. Some of the future add-ons can be leapfrog quickly. For example, we have already demoed the, our smart locker integration to NRF. This is gonna be a very important feature for a lot of retailers who are depending on placing items in lockers so that the retailers, so that the consumer can pick up any time of the day. Another future add-on will be an enhanced UI. We strongly believe human-centric design is at the center of realizing the true value add of any offering or solution. Even though the UI you saw today, it works great, but we want to make it more efficient when it comes to batch order processing. We already have wireframes ready for the user interface version 2.0. However, we would like to deploy it with prospective customers. The co-creation approach of Fujitsu ensures that we are simplifying the process of the UI the right way so that our users see the right information at the right time with less number of clicks. As a final thought on this roadmap, I would like to highlight that our ability to scale all of this in an agile manner remains at the heart, and, uh, at the heart of our vision and strategy. With that said, I would like to turn it over to Paul to really talk about where we're going to go next. Thank you, Parashar. That was that was excellent. Um, so as you can see, everybody, I mean, with a new Fujitsu in-store uh, fulfillment solution, uh, we're well on our way to deliver a very compelling solution for, for you, for retailers, uh, to help you address the many different needs for effective BOPAS operation and execution in your stores. Uh, this solution, as we discussed, has not only been developed uh, based on Fujitsu's 35 years of retail experience, but also based on ongoing interactions with retailers like you and, of course, uh, many industry consultants. The solution solves for really a critical business problem related to uh, in-store fulfillment today, and which we all know has become uh, more of a need rather than a want given where the markets are heading. So our solution has been designed to address many aspects of order uh, fulfillment lifecycle in the store and influences many per personas as we showed, uh, from the customer who is placing the order to the store picker, to the CSR and the store manager in this case. Uh, so th this is it's important to understand, this is not a standalone system, it's not a task management solution. It's an intelligent task management platform. And what I mean by that is it's a platform and a solution that can easily be deployed and configured in a very agile manner, as uh, Parashar mentioned. Uh, and more importantly, it can be scaled to keep up with the changing business model that, you're, that you implement today. Uh, so uh, since it's built on the Salesforce platform, the low code application platform, uh, it's going to help retailers make use of new and updated features from Salesforce. And those come every uh, three times a year, if you're not familiar from Salesforce. So we're going to be constantly able to uh, make enhancements uh, through their platform improvements. Uh, so our, uh, for our solution, there's, uh, there's really no more waiting for months and, and even a year to get a handful of features rolled out to your stores anymore. Uh, if a retailer is waiting that long, then there's a high probability that the competition's not only caught up with you, but uh, you may have acquired some of your most uh, you know, market share and most invaluable customers. So we want to prevent that from happening, obviously. Uh, the SaaS model takes, uh, you know, makes the speed to market, of course, uh, a concept, uh, a reality with this solution. Uh, so retailers can create a competitive edge in their industry. Uh, and in the version that we've uh, demoed today, we've added many of the basic needs for shift-based picking and planning, uh, task allocation and oversight, tracking and communication, and of course, dashboards. So all these features we believe will significantly help you retailers uh, in the upcoming holiday season uh, and provide future opportunities to expand uh, on this solution for larger store operations. That will significantly uh, expand the business value. So the news today is that we're now ready for early customer pilots uh, and trials of the solution. So this uh, ends our session for today. 
Uh, first, I'd like to thank my colleagues, uh, Parashar and Nitin, as well as everyone else who have been contributing to this session, uh, preparing for it. Uh, the same, of course, goes for all of you in the audience for attending our webinar. Our aim is to provide you with some insights into how we're addressing today's acute uh, uh, retail challenges, and we hope we've accomplished that today. Uh, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, you can do that by looking at the, at the contact us on the uh, what's shown in the URL, just above the URL, salesforce at fujitsu.com on this slide. Thank you very much. Uh, and then uh, we'd be happy to answer your questions. Uh, you'll also find plenty of additional information uh, at the URL shown here. Uh, so that's it for today. Again, thank you for joining us.